Hey guys, I just shot an interview with Chris Hipgrave from Piranha Kayaks. Want to give Chris a big thank you. This channel was originally started just so I would have to talk less around the campfire. I spent a year just comparing different boats and having the same conversations again and again. And then I started this YouTube channel. It blew up. And suddenly the things that I say on the internet started having an impact on people's livings. Because of that, I've come to see an importance on my side to interact with the companies, make sure that I understand where they were coming from instead of asking open-ended questions. Just do my part to be a better part of the community. And I think really the person that benefits from that is you. So yeah, here you go. Huge thanks to Chris for his time and a lot of good stuff in here. Um, I want you to be able to just be ca as candid as you can be um, and just relaxed. So I, I really appreciate you you know, doing this as an interview. Um, but so the, um, I, I've been in the scorch now for quite a bit of time. And um, I think I finally found that boat to get me out of the mock now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I actually had to go back because of all the, the different boats I paddle. I actually had to go back and bum a large Machno and sit in it to make sure it was like as good as I remembered it being. And um, I immediately was like, "Yeah, I, I, I already like the Scorch better." Um, but I know that like for our region, there are so many things that I need a little bit more stern squeak out of you know like i know that the uh the scorch is going to tap but that's that's an us thing you know yeah no of course, of course. no that's um that's great feedback on the scorch i mean the, listen i i haven't been in a creek boat in a long time that just makes me giggle regardless of where i am when normally normally the emotions that we have when we're creaking are a result of where we are but this is the first creek boat i can remember me getting into in a long time where i'm just giggling because of the moves that I'm doing and the response that I'm getting and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really digging it. I'm, I'm thrilled to hear you are too. Well, and, and you have like a slalom history, right? So to have a creek boat that you can hit, hit flip like that and just, cause I've been paddling a ton of Zet. So like I was really kind of not looking forward to going into something that was going to be really rigid and take a lot of muscle. I was, I was enjoying that that flick and it shocked me to that it was like it was in the scorch when I when I got there I was expecting you know an I-beam railing through and it, it completely oh, took me off guard no it's it's very very nimble like even it, even the scorch x the 10 foot version I mean it doesn't feel like it's 10 feet long that scorch hull is just so so nimble it's it's, it's freaking brilliant R Robert Pearson did an amazing job with with that he really did yeah i mean i would um i hadn't i try not to watch what what anyone's doing with these boats what i'm going through until i have my mind made up on on a review so i was two minutes ago watching the it thing dave did with adventure pdx in terms of talking about his his mindset going through and just saying like don't be afraid of the the 10 feet you know and if you hadn't paddled the large scorch you would be really skeeved out by 10 feet but i get what he's saying from yeah pearson did amazing on this boat for sure yeah, for um sure. the well and, the, and then from from our side of it the thing that was craziest for me was like you guys gave us a, a, a concept drawing for this boat you know it's gonna be like between like eight feet and ten feet it's gonna have kick rocker and we just had to sort of like trust you guys when we ordered boats going you know, like yeah, they've been doing this for 40 years. I don't think they're going to miss. You know? So then to see this thing come out the other side and it, there be four sizes was crazy. Um, how did you get from like, and then in my same token, like when I got more information down the road, it was, I was sort of expecting to see an expedition boat. Like I thought that's what the, the X was going to be about. How did it go from like, a, you know, what was the evolution there? I heard there was sort of like a divergence as you were going down the road. Yeah, so uh, we, we were committed to designing a replacement for the burn. And, uh, and part of that process is listening to what both we and consumers want, wanted from that replacement. So we had that in our left ear. 
and then in our right ear we had uh, Dave Fuseli there in in on the white salmon pushing for this 10 foot creek boat uh, which he has done for years and when we started looking at what the replacement burn customers wanted and what Dave wanted we realized there was a lot of crossover there um, albeit for Dave he was no Dave was looking for slightly different things but but there was a great deal of crossover so for that burn customer we wanted a lot of stability uh, we wanted a, a dry ride so that, that means rocker we wanted to get that stern out the way so it wasn't tapping tapping and pushing people offline um, you know these these are all similar things to say that Dave wanted in his 10 foot creek boat and uh, albeit he wanted to do things like be able to double pump the stern and, and get, get the bow up and over stuff. You know, that the burn customer is, is not likely to do that. So, but when we realized that the crossover was there, these two projects came together uh, in the form of the Scorch. So the Scorch, small, small meat. So that's, uh, so the, you talked about that line drawing and our very ambiguous description of that boat a year ago. That's because it was still, it was still coming together for us as well but we were committed down this path. Um, yes, yeah, so we've ended up with these essentially two boats. So we've got the small, medium and large Scorch, which is very much a worthy, a worthy replacement of the burn. I think it ticks a lot of those boxes and we couldn't be more stoked about it. Um, but now we have this Scorch X, which takes all of the, everything we wanted to achieve in the Scorch. But as we say in our marketing materials, it takes that that philosophy and just ramps them all up to 10. Yeah. Um, so Dave gets what he wants out of it too. And, and, and it is an expedition boat. For someone like Dave, it's going to be his multi-day boat as well. But it's also going to be that big volume boat. It, I mean, hell, I paddled it on the Netahela this week, the Scorch X, and I had a hoot. I was giggling. It was great. So it's um, someone like me, um, you know, that wants a little bit more out of performance out of the creek boat. I think the Scorch X is going to be my boat. It's going to be where I land. So, so that's kind of the genesis of the design and, and how we went from two two boats into one, and then just kind of peeled them off. Can you quickly explain for people who are wondering um, why they should buy a brand new boat? I mean, I already know the answer, but why they should buy a brand new Scorch X instead of going and trying to snag an outburst like that. You know, something, something like that, like, oh, the 10 foot is 10 foot. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll compare the Scorch to the boat that it, that it replaces, the Burn. I mean, the Burn was around a very long time. But if you look at the Burn, I would argue it's old school. It doesn't have the rocker um, for the dry, confident ride. It has very aggressive rails, which we thought was the right thing to do back then. But the sport has progressed in a different direction now. Um, so we were able to tuck those rails up, which we didn't have. Essentially, essentially, the Scorch is a. Essentially, the sport has moved so far since boats like the Burn and the Outburst, and not just the sport as a whole, but how we teach it, how we teach it in our canoe clubs or in instruction facilities. That this more this rapid rapid progression style of teaching has it helped to evolve the sport, and the Scorch captures all of that. Um, whereas if you look at boats like the Outburst, the, the RPM, the, the Burn, these old school boats that were legends in their own days, I mean, they look super dated. It doesn't mean they're not fun to paddle in the right hands, but they're just, they're obviously very dated. So these, these, these boats make it easy. These new boats make it easy. You transitioned beautifully. I've got, I've got literally a, uh, a list of questions here on the back of a napkin. Um, transitioned beautifully to one of the ones I definitely wanted to hit, which is what's your, your vision now for a beginner boat? I feel like um, it's changing so much. I mean, you guys have taken the burn out of rotation, daggers taking the mamba out of rotation at basically the same time. And you're both going to put something out there that the pro team is going to go out there and just go huge on. And I think you know, it, it sort of is going to, Ask some some beginners are going to find themselves asking, "Does that mean it's still okay for me?" Yeah, yeah. and that's a great yeah. and that's a great yeah. question to ask, particularly when you look at the media that all of us as paddling companies are producing. You know, for 
you know, we we need to make sure beginners can paddle it, but we also want to make sure our class five team guys can go big in it. So, so I, I I get it. I, I get why there's why there's why there is this conundrum. But I, but I think I think you have to back up your question. What is a beginner? There there are beginners all over the place. There will be be, be there will be beginners entry level paddlers that the sport does not suit, and I fully fully admit that. But there will be others that the the new dagger code won't be won't work work won't won't work for, um, or Jackson the Zen, which is kind of their their boat in the same genre. So, um, I personally think that uh, piranha boats benefit more from a more driven style of paddling, um, whereas some of those other boats I've mentioned are more of that float and float and booth style. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. You know, I would agree with you. Yeah, so you know, the float and booth boat we have in our lineup is the Maki. So if, if I had that beginner in front of me and I realized that that, that was their style, I would uh, I would I would um, I would push them over to the to the to the uh, Makno in our lineup. So um, yeah, I like yeah. the way that you I like the way that you put that. Um, I had a, I had a bunch of people a couple months ago like asking when I was doing reviews to get very technical about hull speeds and widths and dimensions and. That's exactly why I describe these boats in terms of the way that they make me feel because, and the way that they have to be paddled, because I think that's such a better way to think about this. So, and that was exactly where I was going with the, with the question in terms of, um, you know, the barriers to entry almost. Um, what, uh, yeah. Oh no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think no, the, the last series of boats we've come out with at Piranha have all rewarded that driven style of paddling. So whether no, the nine R was that style. The Ripper is that style as well. Uh, and now we have the Scorch and the Scorch X. So you know, as as a whole, uh, you know our, our our recent boats kind of reward that style. Um, the Scorch you can definitely float when you want to. Um, yeah. You know, you know the the edge is nicely out of the water. But if you want to get the most out of that boat, I think you definitely have to be a little bit more. You, you have you have to be moving. Yeah, and, and I would say that there's there's sort of a bottomless well of rewards in terms of getting comfortable driving a boat. Um, so if it anything that's pushing someone to do that, it's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, there aren't too many uh, there aren't too many pro paddlers that are that are, that, are, that, are, that go into that float and boost style of, of kayaking, right? So. Well, you can't be a pro boater and like Burning Man over a drop and surf a hole for five minutes anymore. So, That's yeah. Right. <laughs> That's right. Um, where you, you mentioned the 9R2. Um, man, when I paddle the Scorch, I just feel like I, I just, in my mind, I jump over the top of the 9R2 and land directly onto the Scorch. Um, I just, I see such a more direct line in terms of like the rocker and the way the boat feels when, when you're trying to help someone pick out a boat, how are you going to, what's going to make you decide to push someone towards the 9R2 or the Scorch? How are you splitting those two boats in your mind and what are you identifying as the strengths and the, the core feeling that you're chasing in each one of those? Well, I'm not, I'm not breaking. I'm not breaking it down into two on um, two areas. I'm actually breaking it down into three because essentially we have three creek boats now, which is crazy. Um, yeah. So first of all, you have got to figure out who the paddler is and where they're going, right? So that has a huge amount amount to, amount to do with it. So that's where I always start the conversation when I'm on the sales floor talking to a customer or a dealer. But you know, the Makno is as we've already discussed. A platform that can it's that float and boost style it has no edges so it definitely does well in uh, really low water manky stuff like you guys have up there and we have here in the southeast the makano excels in that environment so there will always be a place for a makano style boat in piranha's lineup as a result and then then on the, the far extreme end now now we have the, the scorch a boat that likes to be driven that has edge that's hyper maneuverable, um, super agile. And then we kind of have the 9R2 now that's, that's, that's kind of a step, almost a step down or a step towards the Makno from the Scorch. And the, uh, the 9R2 is arguably faster in a straight line, but it is definitely um, 
it's not as maneuverable. There's a little feels like you've got a little bit more stern in the back. So oh yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be curious to see kind of how the Scorch and the nine R two kind of kind of end up being separated by the consumers. You know, uh, I, I think it's gonna be very very interesting, and we're watching it carefully too. But uh, no, the nine R two is definitely uh, a little bit more point and shoot at speed and that rewarding style, whereas the nine that the nine are uh, sorry the scorch you, you almost feel like you're in a slalom boat like you you don't want to ever go when you're in a scorch you don't ever want to just point at something and go it just rewards you like whizzing in and out of rocks and eddies and flipping over things and you know that there isn't that same reward there with the nine r2 for paddling in that style so very different boats yeah i was i would the the C word Canada is not allowed in our house right now because we've been waiting for the border. Um, but I was, I was really hoping to get both up on like really boily stuff on the Ottawa and, and try and understand that dynamic. But I think that's basically where the difference would be in my mind it would be your approach to big water. It was probably where that's going to be and how they interact with boils and strong cross currents. I had to guess. Chatting with, uh, chatting with, uh, I was out with Kiseli in White Salmon for a couple of weeks here recently, and we have the Scorch X's out there, and he had it out on the Cispus and a couple of other places, and Dave was describing how when the, when the Scorch kind of lands in those boils, he can just steer the boat with just little inputs from his hips, yeah. whereas, the, whereas the 9R2 you know, tends to just want to go in the direction that it's pointed in across boils. So again, it's that different edge, a different style of edge. And also how that how the stern is interacting with those boils as well. So, but yeah, it's yeah, going gonna, gonna, gonna to be fun figuring out what this boat excels at. I'm I'm super excited about it. I've been paddling the large scorch for a while, but I'm ready to I'm ready to fully commit to the X. <laughs> Man, I just uh, I just would stern tap too much. I would think, but I want to know. You know, I want to get in one and, and really find out. There were. Uh, Tony, John Fagno were on the, uh, and I were on this raquette this weekend and we kept talking about that because that's a run where before we started racing that in long boats, you always thought, oh, the eight footer, the eight and a half footer is the run for this. And then we learned what the value of a stern was in terms of that volume that pushes you out. And, and that's one of the things that I think about with the scorch the most is that, that long, long stern. When I first saw it, my first thought was I could take a circular saw and cut three inches off the back of this. And then the more time that you spend actually using it, the more that you realize it's like a shovel back there that's just catching that that green water and giving you that push. And I think that's really where you're getting that late pop coming out of everything in the landing. Yeah. So yeah, depending depending on the, on how it goes. Um. One of the things that I've, I've just noticed over time with you guys is you guys seem to have a nimbleness as a company that a lot of other brands don't. I mean, like you can go out and make a fusion duo. You can make an X. You, you always seem to have a little bit of wiggle room to just take chances and not in like the Corin Addison, everything is taking chances, but in the, like you have a very standard, you know, not standard, but a very strong lineup. And then you're willing to roll the dice on something. What, what is it about Piranha that gives you that ability? Uh, I would say uh, two, two primary ones. One is our size. We're a tiny company compared to our peers. And we're tiny because we only make two things. We make whitewater kayaks and we make sea kayaks. That's it. And we're literally everybody at the company paddles, including Graham Makarith, who who's owned, owned the company for 50 years. And Everybody is passionate about white water and or sea kayaking. So, uh, so our size allows us to be nimble. Um, and it also uh, means that we're not um, beholden to these high volume, um, high volume boats like fishing boats and wreck boats and that type of stuff. But once you get to a certain size, you need those, you need those style of boats in order to keep your company afloat. You, that's where you make your money because there's, you're not, your quickest way to make a million dollars in the whitewater industry is to start with two. So, I mean, it just, you know, it's, uh, so once you go down the wreck boat, fishing boat path, you're pretty committed to it as a company from a financial standpoint. And we don't have to, 
because we just make white water boats and sea kayaks. So if we have a wild idea, hell, let's try it out because we've got nothing to lose because that's where the passion is and that's where the drive is for the company. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, basically comparing a destroyer to a, um, an aircraft carrier, there's just so much more nuts and bolts to keep a thing going versus being able to say, we can afford the risk of a mold. Let's go give it a chance. Yeah. And, and, you know, I would also add that being a UK company, we have, um, you know, different overhead, um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? We we have different we have different things with our company that we have to keep an eye on versus an American company. You know, there the, the access to access to mold making, taxes, currency fluctuations, that type of stuff. You know, that that's all types. We you know American companies have a different set of things that they have to look at in order to remain profitable than than than, than, this, than maybe we do. So, hmm. uh, being a being a European company can be viewed as a positive, it can be viewed as a negative, but I, I think as, a, as the fact we've been around 50 years means that we're, we're obviously doing something right. So. Yeah, I said I said 40 before, I apologize, I shorted you by an entire decade. It's quite okay. <laughs> um, so to, to that end, um, do you, I'm not, I, I, I know that you had some big decisions to do this week and I'm not asking for any specifics, but what do you see now? I mean, that's sort of the question we all are asking ourselves at this time of year as we're looking at what next year might be. Um, you know, you, you guys have what a 12 year old Jed, but freestyle is sort of in hibernation. Um, do you have an idea of where you think the sport's going and how you guys might track to, to follow or to lead even? For sure. We have. Yeah. Uh, Again, looking for a company where 100% of the employees are passionate paddlers, and me, uh, I, that the help that does nothing but help us keep our finger on the pulse. And we're quite happy to talk to people and disagree with them if we have to. But we're out there on the rivers every weekend, so that feedback's easy to come by, which is great. So yes, we have a solid direction which we are chasing, um, and we've got some really really neat things up our sleeves for for the years ahead. And those things may change as the industry continues to change. But right now, we're pretty committed to the path that we're on. And I, I couldn't be more excited about the direction that we're going. And the scorch, but the scorch is definitely the, it is, we're, we're all in on the scorch right now, for sure. Yeah. Um, and with the, scor the small scorch and the scorch X just reaching American shores. Um, but we've got, we've got some cool stuff planned for the year ahead. Oh, sweet. That was, that was my, my next question was the small. So the small is arriving on this container, basically. Yeah. So we have the, the medium and the large scorches are already here in retailers. The small just hit production this week. So they're, they're over there making them as fast as they can. They'll get put into a container and it'll sail this way. And then the X's are, are literally probably a week away. Our first container of X's is probably a week away from landing here in America. So Sweet. Sweet. Yep. Um, noticed on the 2021 boats, there's a lot more decaling going on. What is the MKZ3 uh, or whatever that logo is right next to the seat? Yeah. Uh, uh, MZ3 is just the name of the plastic that we use, uh, the super linear plastic that we use. So that's the name that we gave it. It just allows us to say MZ3 rather than super linear polyethylene plastic. <laughs> MZ, <laughs> MZ3, MZ, MZ3 just rolls off the tongue a whole lot, a whole lot better. So that's, gotcha. our, that's our proprietary mix of, of that plastic that we use. So. Cool. Um, yeah, I just, I got a bunch of questions that put in about that one. Um, I think I think I'm getting you've just been banging out uh, answers rapid fire. So um, I, I think I'm more or less getting to the the end. Um, is there is there anything I missed or that you would want to to say about what's going on at Piranha? I think we covered it, Alex. I mean, it, it, it's been a big, big couple of years for us, right, with our 50th anniversary. 
that that whole that whole party got squashed by this silly pandemic but it certainly hasn't slowed us down with uh, with boats like the scorch moving through so yeah we're it's, it's an exciting time it's an exciting time for piranha and even though we're 50 years in there's the, the vision for the next 50 years is there so it's going to be it's going to i i couldn't be more excited to be with piranha and the direction that we're taking so it's going to be it's going to be super cool yeah i mean you know i much like i said last year um that jackson easily has the best lineup that they've ever had you guys easily have the best lineup i you guys have ever had and you are just banging on all cylinders it's super impressive um i i do i always i wanted to save one sort of goofy question um how many carbon ozones did you guys sell <laughs> Not many, but that's, <laughs> but, but that's not the point of the carbon ozone. I mean, the carbon ozone, the carbon jet, and the carbon twelve R that I'm looking at on my on, on my on my car right now. You know, these are all these are all halo projects that we that we're passionate about. But you know, it's not about it's not about selling those in any great number. It's about having this. Like you can't. Yeah, it's about having these inc these incredibly beautiful halo pieces out there to drive to, to drive attention and sales back to the real things. Oh yeah, I mean, I mostly asked the question because um, I am sure that come green race time, there are going to be rumors about a uh, a carbon scorch peeking its head up somewhere, much like the carbon <laughs> phantom showed up uh, out of nowhere. I'm not going to say no, but I mean, it it might happen. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I'm, I'm going to be rooting for a basement project showing up and getting crashed at Gorilla. So, <laughs> well, I, this, uh, this beautiful 12 R I'm really reluctant to allow, allow it to race up the green race because it's so good. You know, you could definitely, I mean, it's amazingly well built, but that river is so abusive. So I, I, I'm not sure how many runs we'd get out of it, but I, I think I might, I think I might just keep that thing in, in the my back pocket for the Gawley race and the Russell Court race and races like that where there aren't any big hits. I mean, or something like the, um, the Benny Mar, like Enduro, how many miles can you do in 24 hours? That would be the boat, right? So I'm sure that it, they don't go bad, right? There'll, there'll always be a day for it. That's right. That's right. Well, that's awesome. Um, Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm going to end the interview here.